All right, call to the public. In accordance with ARF 38-431.01H, and as a matter of policy, the Central Yavapai Fire District Board has decided to allow public comments as time permits. Therefore, those wishing to address the board regarding an issue within the jurisdiction of, the, of this public body may do so in an orderly manner that includes completing a call to the public and committing it to staff for the record. If a written statement is being read, please provide a copy to ensure it is entered into the record accurately. Individuals will be limited to, limited to speak for three minutes and call to the public shall not exceed 30 minutes per meeting. Are there any wishing to speak? Yes, ma'am. Larry Jacobs regarding Attorney Cornelius, item number five from last month's meeting and comments. Good evening, Central Yavapai Fire District Board. Again, Larry Jacobs, 20-year resident of Central Yavapai Fire District. On February 26, 2018, I submitted a request to address the Central Yavapai Fire Board to alert them of what I believe was a second forged check written on 8-1-2018 for $250,000. Mr. Jacobs, we will not be entertaining I'm that. Talking, I'm talking that about Mr. A... Cornelius' stuff now. We're talking about his statements, and that's what I'm going to talk about. I believe that attorney Mr. Cornelius was alerted that I planned to address the matter because he submitted paperwork to the secretary prior to the start of the board meeting. As item four, call to the public, was announced by Chairperson Packard, there appeared to be a prearranged agreement with attorney Cornelius to take item five, legal response to accusation of alleged criminal conduct and conflicts of interest raised during January 2018, call to the public, out of order. You are out of order. I'm not out of order. I say you are. I'm here to tell you I'm going to talk about what Mr. Cornelius said. Mr. Cornelius specifically said I'm not going to address allegations of criminal Mr. conduct Jacob, because it's not is within your legal, jurisdiction. That is a legal matter. Okay, well I have two times prior to that in 2013 he did allow it. Uh, and that's what I plan to bring to the board. So there's a conflict in what Mr. Cornelius is saying. We don't know what you're talking well, about, I want to bring and it you forward. are out of order. How am I out of order? Please that is a person. legal issue. It is not a legal issue because he allowed it in 2013, and there were two letters written. That is three years ago. It doesn't matter when it was. There's no change in the law or anything else to go along with that. Sir, if you'd like to provide copies, I'm sorry. I will provide copies. If you'd like to provide copies of those so that... Uh, I have an opportunity to review them and can advise the board. I think that would be appropriate. Well, the board should all get a copy of these because they're entitled to them. Because you made some mistakes, Mr. Cornelius, and they need to know that you're giving them bad legal advice. And when you're done passing them out, would you please have a seat? Are there any others through there? Yes, ma'am. Chris Cugnio regarding conflict of interest. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you know, police presence, really. We just want to engage our elected body. Uh, these guys should be out on the streets. Um, we need an independent legal counsel to represent CYFD. Madam Chair, we, this is an agendized item you're speaking to later on in this agenda. We, you've already addressed that many times. Well, can I, I can't finish what I'm saying. You're stopping this from happening right now, cutting into my precious three minutes. Madam Chair, um, you, by not allowing the public to address and to call the public, um, by not allowing the public to address their issues of concern to this board, which is our responsibility to hear them out, we don't necessarily have to respond to them. But it's their First Amendment right to do so. You are violating the First Amendment right today by not allowing these individuals to bring their concern. That's all they're doing. 
How to permit trafficking on the agenda? You have brought it many times before. It is a legal issue. It's not a, <laughs> Madam Chair, it's on the agenda. We're speaking to something on your agenda. All right, go ahead. Okay, thank you. We need an independent legal counsel. There's reasons why Prescott and Chino Valley city governments don't share the same council, because sometimes the interests are very much different. Mr. Kirkneo, you have made that point many times, okay. but we don't have to listen. Well, I never made this point before because it just happened All right, last give month. Us new Madam Chair, you betcha. This guy runs your meeting sometimes. It was very obvious at the last meeting. Emergency e-sessions, moving agenda items around, cutting off public comment, you know, and it continues today. How much are these lawsuits costing us with ACE? When that goes into lawsuits, only the lawyers win on that. Aren't we talking to them one-on-one? -on -one? We can't solve this in a Prescott Valley kind of way. And you know what? Banners mean something. For the past three months, he's got a black bow tie with skull and crossbones. And what does that represent? It's a pirate. And what do pirates do? They pillage the cities and towns. It ain't Halloween. That's what you wear. So there's all your new all right. stuff, Madam Enough. Chair. Thank you very much. Yes, and he has a different tie on tonight. Yeah, thank you very much.